what does it mean by VLSI front-end design and back-end design? Which one is best for you and what are the opportunities in India? We'll discuss everything in this video, so please stay tuned. Hey, hi, I'm your big brother, Rasdeep. Currently, I'm working as CAD engineer with Intel. And thanks, Megala, for asking this question. So see, in software domain, uh, it's very easy to differentiate your front-end and back-end. Everything you see in your laptop or mobile are front-end and everything working on back-end like how data are being stored, how your login password are got authenticated are back-end. So it's very simple but problem with VLSI design like if you don't know deeply then the full VLSI design will be a black box for you. For example, this laptop is working here. Everything behind the door is working like processor. You don't know anything. So for you, it's everything is back-end only. But as a VLSI engineer, we have the specification. And yes, uh, in VLSI design, there is a very rough boundary between the front-end VLSI design and the back-end VLSI design. And there are few job profiles which are in mixed category. Like you can't define it as front-end or back-end. So front-end design start with the defining the specification. And specification are like the end goal. What you want to manufacture. Like what is the output. If it is a, a equal to B plus C, you are designing that system then it should able to do the addition these are the specification and in specification there are many other things also like timing requirement and many other things i am not going to those things now after deciding on your specification then come the architecture this step define the efficiency of your design in simple part architecture is like defining how many and which resource you will use to implement this function and the result of your architecture should be efficient and for that architecture engineer paid in millions because this is the most important task in full VLSI design and as we are beginner in VLSI industry so we won't be fortunate enough to be architecture engineer or defining a specification our job start from the third step and it is RTL coding in RTL coding again we have many layer of abstraction like top level coding then intermediate and low level so let me explain you what those things are Top level is like behavioral description. Like for our example, we want to design A equal to B plus C. So in RTL coding or our very low coding, we will just explain like, like how we will achieve this thing. So now our example is very easy, but if it is a very complex thing, then you need to first do the RTL coding in behavioral aspects. You need to see if you can achieve the specification. If yes, then what we do, we go little below and we write our very low code or RTL code in gate level. So to make you understand this difference, for example, see this code. This code is in behavioral level. Here I am implementing A equal to B plus C. I'm implementing it, but I'm not specifying like how I'll implement this thing in hardware. So this is behavioral very low coding and same code if I write in this way then this is your gate level specification because here I am telling I'll use the end gate. In fast code you don't know you will use end gate or NAND gate or NOR gate but in second code I am specifying that yes I'll be using in hardware end gate only. So this is next level of specification in RTL coding and also in RTL coding we can go more below like transistor level definition also like this is the end gate so how i'll implement end gate through my mosfet my device and sometimes we go a little below to circuit level also and circuit level means some other parasitic element are there like register capacitor so we also define those things in RTL design we go up to transistor level if we want to tweak the design of our transistor and tweaking the design is means like increasing w or l of mosfet and those things we do if we are, are doing the full custom design but if we are doing standard cell-based design then up to gate level is sufficient and if you are getting confused like what is standard cell-based and what is full custom design then let me tell you in simple word standard cell-based means all the thing like our end gate NAND gate NOR gate are already defined in transistor level like schematics are already available and we don't need to worry about those things we'll just take those end gate in our schematic and work is done but if we are doing the full custom design like memory design then for efficiency part we need to sometimes tweak up to the transistor level we won't work with standard cell-based design so there we ourselves 
design the end gate using the mosfets so these are the design part after that most interesting part and it is the verification engineer so verification engineer already know the end goal you are designing a, a equal to b plus c and if your b is one and c is one then our result should be two he already know two so what he do he take the design from a design engineer and he again has the automated codes ready in his or her CAD tool so he just feed the design and he give the input automatically and he expect that this should be the answer like if it is one then one input then answer should be two if it is three and five then answer should be uh, likewise and they check this thing in all the corner cases and if everything is fine then well and good if not then verification engineer will ping design engineer to tweak their design and this loop will go for few time till the time we get all the specification met and here end our front end design in back end design our first work is floor planning and floor planning is exactly like if you have a plot and you want to build your house then what you will do you will tell the builder that hey i need a building which is most efficient same wise in vlsi design silicon is very costly so we want maximum design in minimum possible space and for that a efficient floor planning is must so as in front end design architecture engineer paid the most here also floor planner they are very experienced people and they are paid in million after floor plan is defined then come placing and routing and routing also have many algorithms algorithms means how you approach the routing and it's not simple if you've seen my this video i have suggested you one course physical vlsi design so they are in the, that course they have explained like complexity of the routing because see you have thousands of blocks in floor plans if you have one block here and that block need to be connected with this block and these two can't be in same place if we want to uh, have an efficient design then we need to be somewhere middle between the efficiency and between the routing part so that's why we have many al algorithms and many techniques you can learn them if you go through that course after that again verification engineer is there and verification engineer what they do they especially see uh, two things generally two things for sure and it is trc design rule check and lvs like your layout is same as the schematic and design rule check is nothing but it is a file defined there okay and this file is defined by the foundry people i will come to the point who are foundry people so right now they are third party so foundry people define that if you are drawing these two lines then between these two lines there should be this much of separation there should be otherwise we won't be able to manufacture it 100 percent correctly likewise there are many rules are there which is de uh, defined by the foundry people so verification engineers see that those rules are in place and also lvs checks is correct there are some other flaws in verification like high voltage flow then there are many and those are design specific they uh, come with respect to design but in general drc and lvs are every time they need to check those things and then we have the sta or instruction engineer so what they do sta engineer static time analyze engineer they analyze the timing requirement like if you are designing a circuits for 900 megahertz then your design must support that 900 megahertz and it is nothing but the clock frequency so means if your two peak of your clocks coming in five microseconds again then all the work in between should be done in five microseconds only if few blocks are delaying then you won't be achieving your desired speed and then we do the extraction in extraction we find out any extra parasitic uh, introduced in our layout because uh, layouts are having metal layer so if two metal layer running parallelly then those metal two metal layer might be having capacitance parasitic capacitance which we don't want or if it is running too long then it might have some inductor effect also and which we don't want so what do we do we extract them we see if after having them also if we can meet our specification if everything is done super cool otherwise we need to go backward and we need to do the layout designing again and this loop 
uh, iterate will go for two or three time and then finally we have the sign off then let me come to the foundry people so uh, these are the design part like after the sign off design part is over after that also there are few jobs which are miscellaneous they are neither come in front end or back end they are the job of foundry guy and there you have model engineer you have design enablement engineer you have scientist so model engineer are those who define your model like you have a mosfet and mosfet you are having it in your cad tool so cad tool need to know like if i give this much of voltage in gate this much of output should be there so everything are coded okay you need to realize that this thing so this coding of a mosfet or anything is called defining the model so these things are defined by the model engineer then design enablement engineer what they do they have a connect with the designer guy if some problem then uh, foundry people need to help so that design enablement engineer their help and then those scientists they work on r d to get new devices new technology for more advanced node now which domain suit you more see to answer this thing you need to know the skills required for both the two and actually skills are mostly similar uh, few differences are there so let me discuss those things for front end part you need to be for obviously you need to be a very versed with your digital design if you are digital designer and analog if you are analog designer a good grasp of coding is must because you are coding in very low so you need to know how the function are calling how variable are defined and those basic things and in that video i have already explained what are the basic thing you need to know for we in a vlsi industry and then if you are analog engineer then it's very must you must be a expert in your network theory network theory means your kvl kcl rc circuit very important and if we talk for the backend engineer then backend engineer need to be very versed with the process technology and process technology means how the fabrication is done and you are working on 5 nanometer or 10 nanometer then how those things are defined there throw with all the terms used in the process technology you should able to design your layout with keeping the timing constraint in your mind and yes you need to be creative because floor plannings are a creative job and uh, general layout is also a creative job and creativity are must if you are designing full custom design and obviously you need to be throw with your analog and digital design concepts now obvious question which domain you will choose front end or back end see in front end and back end one thing is common and that is they are broadly divided into two category designer and verification engineer so when you are just starting your career in vlsi industry that time getting a designer job is little tough because to be a designer you need to be very thorough with your all basics and yes working as a design engineer is most enjoyable work but that doesn't mean the work of verification engineer is not so cool and trust me any time you can switch from a verification engineer to design engineer so best is that make your entry into the vlsi industry be it any domain okay again broadly if you want to choose front end domain so see front end have some pro and cons same with the back end it's you who need to decide on that which get your interest like in front end you have the freedom of designing because you are starting the design right you have the freedom to choose three input NAND gate or two input NAND gate just example but if you are a back-end engineer you are designing the layout you don't have that freedom because design are already fixed there you can't change them if it is a three input NAND gate you need to make the layout for three input only but for backend guys they have one advantage and that is they are not working on some symbols because when you work on front end you are working on symbols this is my mosfet this is my bjt okay and those things are not real in reality mosfet never look like this thing so you are working on black box kind of thing in front end okay so if you are a guy who want to know the most low level design how they actually look in the circuits then backend is your position because in backend mosfet look like this 
not like this working in backend you have to know like how the things are actually got manufactured how layer by layer like metal one layer then metal two layer in between i have a via how they those things are connected in real world in front end design you have a great chance to implement all the concepts you have learned in your btex or your in your mtex because there we mainly focus on how the circuit designing is done being a front end you got to implement those things but in back end those things are important circuit knowledge but they are not directly used there so what are the opportunity in india see for vlsi design you have all the opportunity all the jobs of front ends are available all the jobs of back end are available and they are in abundance if you have the skill and skill means your analog and digital design if you have the skill analog digital and very log these three things are the main thing so if you have the skill then there are abundant of job so the main thing you can take out from this video is that make your entry to the vlsi industry could it be any job no issue if you have no option never decide on no verification engineer i don't want to go there i only need the design engineer profile only never do these things because if you have experience if you have three year two year then trust me you are from iit nit or any college all are in same level without being from a iit also if you have a two year experience in vlsi you will most probably get the same salary as an iit iit and will draw so there is abundance of jobs just one thing is not met is the skill level because we need the skill level so please invest your time wisely and build your circuit theory so that's all for today and please don't forget to comment down the next topic you want to know from the vlsi industry and one request i have please help me to reach 500 subscribers before end of this year thanks for your time see you in our next video bye bye